welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for the weekly update on Hylion. And they have just rolled out some information this week that I chalk up to be the top story of 2022, no doubt about it. It could very well be the top story uh, in the history of this young company uh, where they have acquired uh, in a cash and stock deal with General Electric to acquire their Carno generator technology we're going to get into the specifics of that deal as appropriate in this video. We're going to jump into the highly on slide deck that was released this week, coupled with what I felt like was equally an important initiative by highly on was kind of a board panel. They took questions from uh, the general investing community, uh, as well as some of the analysts that cover the company uh, with his um uh, with Sherry Lance as well. And I thought that was a very well spent 45 minutes on, on my part, I would encourage you guys to kick over and, and check that information. But um, this information was huge. Okay. Now, when I come on every single week, and I talk about this company, it is imperative that we understand that the availability of information is the key in this deliberation as we monitor this highly on story and this progress and going forward, I wasn't surprised by this information. I was very, very intrigued by this. It was uh, surprising insofar as the Carnot generator itself, but not surprising. I've been saying along this entire time that this Hylion team seems to me to have very interesting potential in providing catalyst and realizing the steps necessary to walk along this path and vision that they have for a cleaner future tomorrow in the commercialization of our transport and logistics businesses, okay? Furthermore, I want people to really understand, and I give a very interesting and elegant uh, uh, perspective on my stock ownership in this company, for full disclaimer, I own 12,200 shares of the company. Uh, I must disclose that to you guys in understanding that my profiling of this company speaks to my conviction on the company, my insistence upon sharing my honest opinion from week to week, whether or not I feel like justified scrutiny or uh, complementary dialogue is warranted. And I deliver on both. And there's folks out there who don't agree with that. They would suggest that I need to do one thing or another. Uh, and irrespective of my commentary, I will still in fact be holding my shares. I give an elegant <laughs> uh, explanation on how I value my current stock position how I currently value my current uh, long call contracts with Hylion as well. Um, for you guys that uh, don't know, I own about 37 long call contracts on the company as well. Uh, anywhere from $3 to up to as much as $10 uh, on my strikes uh, going into the future. I've kicked most of those forward to 2024 uh, for the decision point for me. So please understand my weekly commentary is always meant and aimed at the retail investor. Those folks out there that are, are either long share owners in the company and or those folks that are interested and have heard uh, wind of this company and are looking at this company in the lens of understanding the opportunity that exists with this company, okay? Now, this announcement this week was enormous. Okay, it was an enormous monumental achievement by this companies. And for those people out there that would criticize the deal, I would encourage you to hear those, uh, hear those out, but make your own decisions about where you think this company is going to be into the future. Hylion is not an investment that you're going to enter into and be satisfied tomorrow that you're an investor in the company. Furthermore, if you're ill prepared to enter into this company and it doubles up to $8 from these levels, are you going to be that investor that sees the long-term vision with the company? Or are you going to be one of those investors that are excited that you've made your 100% on the, on the company and you're out? I 
offer my commentary week to week for those ultra long-term investors. And I define that in, in this video for you guys. So if you do have 60 minutes of your time to devote to my in-depth perspective on this company, where it currently is, what this could potentially mean for share owners, I will continually beat this drum until the inevitable happens. What I mean by that is at some point down the line, as we enter into a very blue ocean with this company, I don't see even with this Carno information that has been rolled out this week, that there's anybody even close to this company in marching toward a future in a way that makes the most sense, that listens to their customers, understands what it is that they need, has diversified across their fuel agnostic portfolio in a way that was unknown before this week started and now is understood with complete clarity on this acquisition of the Carnot generator. And we're going to be talking about the specifics of what that means, the fuel agnostic application in the fuel generator itself additional applications that could be deployed by Hylion to uh, realize uh, additional income streams going forward for the company. Uh, and finally, what this could mean for the fleets itself. And we have a long way to go, my friends, between getting this product from a conceptual phase. This was just announced this week. This is gonna take years to unfold. And I'm not gonna promise results overnight. As a matter of fact, I would caution investors to understand that the roadmap that Hylion has laid out into the future really speaks to, and there's two different timelines. The first timeline is to get the Hypertruck ERX the, uh, with the Cummins uh, generator on board into the hands of the fleet by the end of 2023 and going into 2024. My friends, this Carnot uh, generator with the application of a fuel agnostic uh, application in the Hypertruck ERX is beyond those timelines, okay? So if you believe in the Hylion story and you truly believe in being a, a, a long-term share owner, I'm here to fortify your stock position in understanding that the true money in this opportunity is going to be your ability to accumulate base shares, not at an optimal price point, but at a price point that is comfortable for you. It's going to take multiple buy points. It is going to take a perspective in understanding that once you have that base position established in your portfolio, that the ultra long investors on this company are going to be those investors and there will be very few that realize the true vision of this company and the understanding that the maximum profits will probably not be made within a 10 year time horizon, rather 10 years plus, and dare I say multiple decades stacked on top of each other to realize the full potential in this opportunity. I hate to be the bearer of such news, but that is the reality of the situation. Now, the good news is such that when this company reaches $20, when it reaches $50, when it reaches $75, when it reaches $100 plus, I will, my friends, be unable to take you back to the past and provide the very opportunity that is presented right now before our feet. Okay. I want you to think about that. Investing requires imagination. Investing requires hypothesis. Investing requires, yes, some level of trust. And if it's your conviction that you do not, or your premonition that you do not trust this management, how can you invest in the company? It is absolutely imperative that you understand inside and out the direction that this company is heading the vision that it is trying to realize, and the fact that restricting a company right now to such scrupulous timelines is probably a futile game that we will probably inevitably disappointed in if that is your end-all 
be all metric in judging the total overall potential of this company over the ultra long term. I am looking to fortify a community of long term investors that embark upon this journey and are not convinced to sell at 100% gains in this company. And dare I suggest that we are not looking to sell after a 1000% gain in this company. What I'm looking to do is understand that we can fortify a community now of share old owners through information, through availability of information and understanding that institutions are accumulating this company hand over fist right now. It's a retail investors are exiting this company hand over fist. I believe that to be going to be the exacerbated case as this company starts to move north in its price projections, and we start to get a little bit more color around the potential of going from what we do not know now in the path to commercialization and to the path to profitability with this company. Now, with the amount of unknowns that we have with this company, is probably presenting the greatest opportunity for profit into the future. Guys, I can't say it any other way in allowing you guys the opportunity to understand my perspective. Now, could I be misguided? Yes. Could I be wrong? Yes. Could my timelines be off? Yes. Could my premonitions or presumptions about this company be misguided? Yes. This is not one of those situations, guys, and there will be folks that will perceive to have or portray that they have all the options in stock market investing. I've been doing this long enough to tell you that none of that, none of that needs to be even part of the discussion right now. What do we have? We have a young company that if you compare the progress seven years ago of the company and where they are now, making multi-million dollar deals with an $80 billion company like General Electric. It's when we look at it in the context of progress over multiple years that we can only properly quantify the accelerated path and the, the speed at which Hylion is evolving as a company. And it's been presented in uh, no short fashion this, this week, by the announcement of the Carno generator that has been uh, brought into the highly unfold. The question is, where will that unfold over the coming years, guys? We're going to jump into the investor slide deck, and we are going to try to uh, piece out what I feel like is the real value that is um, created by this. This, my friends, is the most bullish news that I've seen on highly in the last seven years of the company. This is it. This is my opinion. Um, I give this opinion openly. Um, it costs you nothing to consume this content, but make no mistake about it, my friends, sometimes the most obvious of answers are the ones right in front of your face. And I would encourage you to take a step back, understand my sincerity around trying to getting to the deeper question of what opportunity lies with this company, how they are going to navigate from now until then, that end, what is going to be the path to math, mass scale up and commercialization and furthermore, the color that the company provides to that end and furthermore, the company's ability to uh, get to profitability. These are the very questions that are looming in the short to medium term. Once this company comes to profitability, guys, um, I will probably shift my posture and go to more of a monitoring phase in this company. Because when I talk about building a community of long-term, ultra long-term uh, stock owners in this company, the potential for taking what an investor in this company has done by establishing a, a position in the company so early on in its inception, the million dollar question becomes, when do you actually exit a position like this? Or do you? That's really the golden question in understanding where we take this opportunity in the future. And a lot of people are going to establish their buy points, their sell points prematurely uh, on this road to commercialization, on this road to profitability, on this road to global expansion with this company. And I would caution 
you guys in understanding that those decision points are looming and they are inevitable. And I would only look to encourage you guys, if you are in the camp of understanding the long-term vision of this company, that my friends is probably going to be where the most profits are made with this company for those few investors that understand that this is not going to be an investment that is going to pay off next year or five years. It could. Again, the stock could double overnight, okay? But to understand that the maximum profits on this company are going to be to enjoy the ride, enjoy being a share owner in this company, and understand that the catalysts that are forthcoming are inevitable, made possible, and proven this week by the announcement of the Carno technology. So with that, guys, we're going to kick you into the investor slide deck and jump into the particulars of this $37 million deal announced by Hylion and General Electric just this week. So obviously a big week here for Hylion and um, keeping with my theme of neutral application here. Um, and for anybody that is new to the Hylion experience, um, you don't necessarily need to hear it from me. Uh, I'm going to give my commentary and my um, opinion uh, over the acquisition here of uh, the Carno technology. However, uh, if you do want to double down on the information that's provided uh, via referral through the independent investor channel, I would encourage you to visit Hylion.com and under the investor tab, you will find two new additions. This being one of them, this is the Carno uh, visual uh, slide deck. It's 13 slides. Uh, feel free to find the information there. And then what is very telling this week is um, Hylion uh, decided to come out with a YouTube video and Thomas Healy actually did a, a quick convening panel um, with uh, Sherry Lance uh, to further explain uh, what it is they're looking to leverage with this technology. And in true Hylion fashion, you notice here that they don't say Class 8 commercial vehicle electrification. And it's something that we're going to talk about amongst many as we get into this uh, slide deck here uh, with this week's announcement of the Carno technology from General Electric. This slide here is easy, my friends, to overlook, and I would caution you not to overlook this. Uh, I would uh, encourage you to take a few moments and really look at what Hylion is looking to communicate in this slide. Uh, I found it to be extremely telling, and if nothing else, this week's news really kind of um, opened my eyes to Hylion looking so far down the line and being such a visionary company for the future. Um, for, for us stock owners, in the company, I, I think we really just need to take a pause, uh, sit back, and look at what these folks are trying to do here. But this here is a 50-year transition of the power sources that are being used to supply uh, power to the grid. That's it. Okay, it's not a reduction in total uh, overall uh, um, use of said fuel. These are the fuel sources that are being derived from to provide the electric power to the grid, okay? Now this is going to pay dividends in the explanation down the line, but when we look here at the increase in renewables, and we look at the total percentage of increase here, nuclear uh, really is the, the number one driver here in providing uh, grid power. Now this is on the source side of the house. Okay, so when we're talking about the BEV revolution, it gets missed all the time when we're talking about range on the side of the BEV fleet and where this energy is coming from. And this snapshot in 2021 really tells the picture on where this is coming from. Still dominated 22% by coal, um, a drastic reduction here in petroleum that charges uh, the grid power. But the increase in uh, natural gas and the increase in renewables and the increase in nuclear power really is the takeaway from this slide here. Now the question isn't necessarily that we're moving in the right direction because we are. The question is what are we doing with that on the consumer side in taking this energy in 2022 and using it to the most efficient manner. 
when we're looking to transition to either a, uh, an electric future and or looking to do more of a range extender or a fuel agnostic type of approach that Hylion has just really rolled out in a big way and separated their first mover advantage in the space here by introducing their capability with the Carnot generator. So take some time to study up on this. This was a very telling slide. This does not get talked about very often. Thomas Healy speaks about this on his panel discussions, and I think sometimes it falls on deaf ears in that uh, even the initiatives politically right now to move to a BEV future is sometimes blinded by the fact that the, the source of the supply of our energy has to be at, at least 50% of the conversation. And I think all the time the conversation gets dominated by the consumer side of the house and it gets completely ignored as to the source of where the energy is coming from that is being burned on the consumer side of the house by the sheer ig uh, ignorance and ignoring where the energy is coming from on the producer side of the house, supplying power to the actual grid itself. And when I suggest that we are in a diesel-dominated present, um, this slide um, depicts exactly what I say over and over again, and I think some people want to continually engage in this debate whether or not hydrogen fuel cell and whether or not renewable natural gas or whether or not BEV is going to be the future, or whether or not it's going to be the present. They're all futile arguments, okay? Make no mistake about it, my friends. We are in a diesel-dominated presence right now. Uh, and if the passenger car market speaks to how slowly uh, over the last 20 years of evolution it takes to adopt a new technology, um, this will speak to the opportunity, yes, uh, but also the patience necessary in seeing this opportunity to where it is that we expect it to go. And Hylion uh, is uh, projecting uh, 20 years from now into the future, having much more of a diversified reliance upon multiple fuels. I've said this many, many, many times. And the Carno generator, when I saw that uh, acquisition this week, I, I was... I was absolutely relieved, and it um, is probably the most bullish news for Hylion, hands down, in 2022, and this is why. It's because they have basically foolproofed themselves for future adoption. Uh, across the um, scientific capability of burning any fuel that they want in their application, they've basically solved that problem. And dare I may say that they have probably just leapfrogged over uh, what some companies have put all their eggs into the hydrogen fuel cell basket. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we move along in this weekly video. But this slide is important. This is on the consumer side, where the first slide was on the producer side. We, we look at what is actually being run in reality and, and where the industry is looking to go based on the technology that we have now today. Now, if you want to come to me and say, Ryan, we have the technology now, I, I would agree conceptually, but not in reality. Um, the technology is, is marching toward uh, an integration, but we are in the very early innings, first inning, <laughs> Uh, of this transition into what is going to be possible, what is going to be validated by the fleets, and where eventually the market is going to be looking to step toward in more of a, of a diversified fuel future as opposed to just saying hydrogen is the future and that's going to be the way of it. I, I, I've never ever agreed with that sentiment. Uh, I've never got on board with that idea that hydrogen was going to somehow dominate the, the future. Um, and this speaks to where I feel like where we're going to go. It's going to still include diesel 20 years from now. I have no doubt about that. But the question is, where are renewables and hydrogen and electric and, and hybrid and all of the other solutions uh, going to play a part into the future here uh, as we evolve this technology and really get it proof tested by the fleets out there 
uh, as they're put into the rigor of over-the-road commercial service. All right, so this slide is very telling. Um, this slide actually has much more merit after this week with the introduction of the uh, the Corno generator. They've replaced fuel agnostic generator uh, with Hypertruck Carno, which is exactly what this unit is. And I'm a little bit interested as to the um, current posture of Hylion and suggesting that at some point down the line they will be coming out with a hypertruck uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicle um, that runs on a fuel cell. However, I do challenge the necessity of that. Uh, I do think Thomas Healy knows this. Um, I do think that the team feels like internally they've hit a home run, which they have. Uh, the question is, does a hydrogen fuel cell future need to be pursued uh, in its exclusivity in that the fuel agnostic generator gives more optionality to the fleets rather than less? It seems as if I would need to understand the glaring benefits of moving toward a hydrogen fuel cell hypertruck for the future uh, and, and understanding its superiority to the Carno. Uh, I don't see that now conceptually. Uh, keep in mind that there is a lot that needs to be unpacked uh, with this Carno technology. Uh, but what what a what a blue ocean uh, Hylion has just now swam into with regard to their ability to scale this product with what they've acquired. Let's understand they've acquired the technology. They've acquired some of the 3D printing capabilities. Um, they've acquired uh, some of the technical expertise in this division from General Electric. And I think more importantly, um, to ex extrapolate the uh, value in the transition agreement that Thomas Ely spoke about on his Q&A to leverage some of the uh, supply chain uh, sources that General Electric has used in getting the Carno along its uh, path toward uh, operability here uh, <clears throat> to, to a point where Hylion felt comfortable uh, acquiring the technology at this um, early stage in the development. Now, make no mistake about it, it was also discussed about how much money and research and development has went into uh, this Carno technology. Uh, it's. I don't want to lose sight of the fact that if uh, Hylion was looking to do this on their own, um, there would be a much larger burn rate in the R&D spend to bring this technology uh, in-house organically. And, and I want you guys to understand, some people might say that they overpaid or underpaid for the technology. Um, I am, am yet to be uh, opinionated on this front. Uh, I believe that it was the smart move to go and just acquire this technology um, along its path of where it is now. I think it was an extremely brilliant move by Hylion, and it will prove to be one of those major catalysts in the turning point of a company that is going to do amazing things down the line, whether it be next week, my friends, whether it be next year, or whether it be a decade from now. Um, I'm not in the speculation business, okay? Uh, however, I am rest assured, 100% convinced that at some point this company is going to make waves in the commercial space. And it's going to be these products here in some form or fashion. We'll talk about that a little bit with the flexibility uh, of the Carno uh, agnostic generator um, and the different applications that it can be put into um, with this new acquisition that was just announced this week. I've always suggested that investing in the next best thing is probably not in anybody's best interest, that uh, investing in um, tried and true uh, sales and bottom line profits, uh, as well as, you know, those companies that have a moat. Hylion is yet to define their moat. Uh, and when you engage upon an investment like Hylion, you really need to understand, I've heard so many different rationales across the board of, you know, I'm not going to touch Hylion until it gets above $10. I'm not sure if I understand that rationale. Um, in other words, buying the stock here at $3.79 is somehow less attractive than buying it at $10.
If you inevitably think that the stock is going to $10, why would you not justify taking a position and scaling into it here? Um, I, I understand somewhat the rationale. I do not think that way in my opportunistic uh, application when I look at Hylion because I've looked at a company here over the last two years that has done nothing but improve um, their posture in this space. Uh, and this is just a, another icing on the cake here, and it sets them up for so many more catalysts into the future, future uh, additional revenue streams uh, through a modular application, and uh, also additional income streams with the potential for power generation for what I just spoke about in the opening slide, the inability of BEV fleets to actually uh, achieve longer routes because of the restriction they have to the plug. Now the Carno can help carry forward that power to those um, those companies that want to run BEV in their application, especially along their shorter routes. We'll talk about that a little bit more, which just opens up uh, other applications. That was just one uh, of many that Thomas Healy alluded to with regard to the opportunity that has been presented by this acquisition of the Carno generator. For those of you guys who are just being introduced to the Carnot generator here, this slide speaks to um, what it is. I presume that these are the um, machines that are part of the acquisition up in the Ohio plant. I believe it's out of Cincinnati, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. But um, the Carnot generator is a highly efficient fuel agnostic, right? So we know what the generator is going to be. We know what the generator is going to be uh, from Cummins and the renewable product. So that that's a, a real key piece of information here uh, designed to deliver high performance, reduce emissions, and maintain the highest levels of reliability. Um, the bears are already jumping on this and suggesting that, oh, okay, well, we don't know full specs on this product yet. Um, no kidding. No kidding. Um, I really am interested to understand what people's motivation is. Um, I'm a bull on this company, therefore it kind of uh, uh, defines my eligibility to either criticize uh, or compliment this company on progress being made. Uh, I just don't understand some people who seemingly don't even have a position in the company uh, finding it in their best interest to criticize this early in the game. This is a game changer. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'm not going to get on here and yell and scream at you. I'm not going to punch myself in the face for 24 hours to get your attention. I'm just going to merely suggest, if you're listening to my words, if you speak good English, this is a game changer. And if you've heard me, I'll say it again for the third time. This is a game changer. Um, this is a huge, huge step in the right direction for Hylion. Not to say that they weren't progressing in the right direction before, but this has just provided so much clarity around where this company uh, goes into the future and really solves the fuel problem. I mean, it really does. So the Carnot generator uses heat to drive a sealed liner uh, generator to produce electricity. The heat is produced by reacting fuels through flameless oxidation or by leveraging other heat sources, including renewables, right? So up to 20 fuels they can use in this to basically... Uh, turn the generator and and actually produce the electricity that's going to charge the batteries and that's really the key once the batteries uh, charge the batteries are what drives the e-axle anyway this is just a power generation source guys this isn't something that's going to give you a back massage okay this isn't something that's going to make you a millionaire tomorrow all right it is what it is so i would suggest that we keep this in context we monitor it going forward. Um, we stay close to the ear uh, and understand new developments that are going to be announced. Um, the, you know, this isn't a, a short-term initiative here by any means by Hylion. As a matter of fact, with regard to the cash burn, uh, Thomas Healy did allude to the ability to maintain uh, their current business plan even with this acquisition. For General Electric, this is kind of small potatoes. But for Hylion, this is a big, big deal. And it's going to be Hylion's ability to take this acquisition as we see it now and scale it up to something and improve upon that $37 million worth of value um, that they've acquired this on and build upon this. Guys, I look at this being a multi-billion dollar uh, piece of their business. And for you guys that have been sleeping under a rock for the last 20 years, 
This is how businesses accumulate value. They'll take a value piece from one piece of business and how long it would have taken General Electric to actually see this thing to commercial would have been anybody's speculation. But Thomas Healy said, look, when we looked at the Carnot generator and when General Electric reached out to Hylion, this was a match made in heaven. This was the very application that they were looking for to seamlessly integrate into an actual usable application on the consumer side. And I, I cannot stress enough how incredible this was to be able to segue the existing research and development here by the additive manufacturing team um, and the generator thermal and performance design team. This is their uh, jet engine division of uh, General Electric. Um, and take this product to the next level. And this is how things work like this, guys. General Electric is an incredible company. It's been around forever. It's an $80 billion company. Um, and and to, to uh, parlay this and to take such a huge ownership stake in Hylion speaks to their bullish uh, perspective on where this thing could scale up to into the future uh, if scaled correctly. Uh, and scaled to address a massive need. I mean, a massive need. We talked about being in the early innings of this. Ask yourself, could you imagine this application being put into the rigor of class eight and dare I say class six and seven at this point, or maybe even smaller applications to meet the need of transitioning from now running on diesel into a future where we are a lot more diversified across our fuel optionality for the commercial space. This is the solution, guys. And I'm super excited about this, and I'm super excited to pay this forward for you guys and turn you on to the source of information on Hylion.com under the investor page. Go check it out for yourself. Learn yourself up. You're going to want to be following this story intimately going forward because it is now part of the fold uh, as we monitor this highly on opportunity from week to week. So where Cummins is expected to help highly on with the carbon NHTSA certification through the EPA, um, it was alluded to by Sherry Lance as well that the Carnot generator was expected to um, meet all of the uh, parameters of uh, the eventual step into having this product certified uh, for over-the-road application here. Um, some of the highlights of the Carno generator is that it is fuel agnostic, over 20 compatible fuels. I, I read this a few times and I couldn't believe it. Uh, but um, the reduced emission on the hydrogen capable and uh, ultra low emissions on conventional fuels um, really does give that optionality. What, what a great opportunity where there wouldn't be availability. And I think that for me, I look at this and if I'm wrong in this application, um, please correct me. But I've always stated that the fuel optionality is going to be the key for fleets in understanding that by branching out on their capability to fuel their units with multiple fuels out there in the fleet, it's going to have them give them the ability to not only choose the lowest cost, the most efficient for the route. It just adds a way different dynamic than just being uh, stuck to not only the fuel, uh, the obvious fuel uh, fluctuations of diesel um, that we're incurring right now as we speak, but also just to look at the optionality across the board for the terrain expected, the payload that is expected to be carried, um, the uh, availability of said fuel. In other words, they may be able to run partial of the route on one specific fuel and then change uh, and do a separate type of fuel because the first primary fuel is not available. So the optionality here is key when we're talking about the advantage to uh, the traditional means of powering our Class 8 space. Uh, expected a 20% increase in efficiency over today's leading generators, enabling reduced operating cost. Um, these are preliminary in nature. The bears are going to suggest that this is unproven technology. Sure, I, I, I understand that at this point, but it's easy to come forward and just say, well, this isn't going to work. 
Um, I think that's an escape to thinking. Um, I would suggest to my friends that we look at what we have now uh, and what Hylion is going to be looking to do with this opportunity as they look to introduce this into the rigor um, and start to really put a proof of concept over this, um, this what they believe uh, this uh, Carno generator can produce in way of efficiency for the fleets. Okay, so again, not to overstate the importance of certain slides, um, this might be easy to overlook, but the notation at the bottom where it says hydrogen capable, the Carnot generator is expected to operate on hydrogen at efficiency levels that even surpass most of today's leading fuel cell solutions. Does this have the ability to take the place of the Hypertruck ERX fuel cell solution into the future? I would dare to suggest yes, that it does. Uh, Thomas Healy knows this. Um, if this is the solution into the future to, um, to, to burn hydrogen when it's available, so be it. Um, I don't see that happening within the next 10 years. I think from a test perspective, I think it's going to be exciting. I think from a test perspective, we have hydrogen available now. However, we do not have it available uh, to a mass scale. So to suggest somehow that the hydrogen fuel cell is somehow going to be the solution of the future and not provide fleets any optionality, uh, to not provide fleets with any type of uh, understanding of how efficient this is going to be, uh, I, I think this is a home run here, and what I alluded to with the Carno generator expected to meet all the CARB and the EPA certifications there at the bottom, this is just a matter of time here before we start to really unpack the potential uh, of this uh, generator, and it's going to be exciting to see some of those um, uh, uh, units hit the street powered by the Carno generator. It just proves that they're stepping in that direction of more of a, of a fuel agnostic type of future and providing fleets that optionality. Exciting times here, guys. It's going to be really interesting. These are all of the fuels that the Carno is expected to be able to run off of, uh, both LNG and gaseous hydrogen. Uh, on the natural gas side, RNG, compressed natural gas, and LNG. Uh, so very cool. Uh, diesel, gasoline, kerosene, jet fuel doesn't really matter uh, as long as they get that that flame flameless, uh, uh, um, you know, reaction within the generator that uh, basically turns that liner and, and produces the power. So very exciting technology here, guys, and um, worth a few moments of your review uh, when we're looking at this Carno technology. I got to hand it to Hylion here. <laughs> where they receive a lot of the scrutiny. They are big thinkers, and uh, I think they get a lot of scrutiny for, um, at this point, being perceived that they're not following through with some of the initial uh, steps. Um, some, some may perceive this to be somewhat um, uh, um, desperate in their acquisition of this Carno. Um, I, prove not, I choose not to look at it that way, um, and here's why. Hylion from the beginning has always revolved around a few themes in their application. What, what are they looking to do? They have a vision for the future and over-the-road transport in the commercial space, okay, in a nutshell. What are some of those things? TCO has always been one of those things that Thomas Healy has suggested, and this is one of the main reasons why I'm such a bull on this company. It's because Hylion is focused on the customer. Whereas I feel like some of the other companies, Nikola especially, seems to really like lipstick. They really do. And in all of my study of Nikola, which I have done, it seems as if they have not had the same reciprocation from their customers that Hylion has. Case in point, many of the Hylion customers have suggested that Hylion knows the trucks better than they do. Furthermore, Many of Hylion's customers have suggested that Hylion actually listens to their customers. This is huge. Furthermore, Thomas Healy has talked about the commonality amongst fleets in sitting down across the table and being able to express a total overall reduction in ownership of the rig over the long term. 
The benefits of going green are great. The benefits of driver experience are great. The potential for increased payload is great. But if you cannot sit down and prove out through the numbers that that total cost of ownership over the life of that truck, 7 to 10 years, is going to absolutely be realized, these fleets will not transition until they are forced to transition. They will not. This is a business. Most of these companies are Fortune 500 companies. Most of them are publicly traded companies. Or the larger uh, companies that are not public are private, and they are large companies. And driving the bottom line is the common common thread amongst all of these fleets. They have to be able to minimize downtime. They have to be able to provide for bottom line total cost of ownership benefit in understanding how this leap of faith is going to benefit them over the long term. I think Hylion probably looked at these efficiency numbers and really the decision was made for them. This wasn't a a chance of acquisition in this deal. I, I believe that the numbers really did drive this opportunity here in the Carnot generator. So when compared the Carnot generator to um, your uh, fuel efficiency, right? Um, When you're talking about fuel cell and you're talking about the internal combustion engine, the difference between the two um, is is estimated to be at about 20%. Uh, Thomas Healy spoke about this on the left-hand side uh, of, of the rig, and that just further strengthens the total cost of ownership equation that we're looking to drive home here for Hylion. Now on the right side, this is something that was brought to my attention by one of my community members that um, has followed Hylion since the beginning with me. So shout out to David for um, really bringing this to my attention, and that is the modular adaptability based on the power need of the unit. Does this suggest that the Corno can be placed in other applications, such as Class 6, Class 7 applications, or as a generating unit? Thomas Healy explicitly uh, identified this as a future uh, moneymaker for the company in providing uh, power generation opportunity for those BEV applications that are restricted by their 150 to 250 mile range and those companies that want to integrate those into their short haul lines to use the Carnot generator uh, to um, actually uh, charge those units um, uh, in route to make sure that they have that power available to uh, satisfy or complete their route. I thought that was really smart. Um, low maintenance here, hermetically sealed. They talked about that. Only one moving part in the generator. That's great. Of course, no oil and no uh, fluids requiring maintenance. They're suggesting that it'll reduce downtime to keep trucks on the road longer. Um, that's quite a stretch. Uh, if they can boast that, they don't have the downtime that BEV have. Uh, and if they're suggesting that there's going to be less downtime than diesel, um, this, again, is what I feel like is a home run. And whether or not they have the data to make this presumption is a little bit earlier on in the game, but it just requires us as uh, investors of the company to monitor along these fronts and any news that we get and any type of uh, uh, explanation on their ability to uh, avoid maintenance based on the components and the technology uh, is going to be incredible for us to to, uh, monitor going forward. I just want to sit here for just a second and enjoy this slide for a second with you guys. So I'm going to stop talking, just take a step back and take a look-see at this old girl right here. Um, For you guys that are wondering about the power of social media and the ability to pay forward information that could be extremely profitable into the future, um, I want to introduce you to adjacent product opportunities uh, declared by none other than Hylion uh, as an opportunity here to branch out and use the Carnot generator to solve this range anxiety and to reduce the cost of electricity for our BEV plugins. I will uh, retract from talking for a few seconds.
Okay, my friends, so this is huge, all right? This is huge. And this is only going to speak to where we go into the future. Is this going to be tomorrow? No. Is this going to be next week? No, it's not. But here's the thing. As Hylion uh, starts to integrate and scale up on this front, you are going to want to pay particular attention. And for you guys that are playing this game, that somehow you're going to pick the stock up at a more opportune time, I would give you a piece of my playbook in understanding that I don't think there's any difference between this stock between $5 and $15. I don't. Um, are you investing in the company at $4 to sell the stock at $15? Since I pose it that way, a lot of you guys are going to say, no, no, Ryan, no, of course not. Of course we're not. Then what's the difference in 4 and 10 and 15 at this particular juncture in what I feel is a multi-billion dollar opportunity? I digress. I'd like you to digest what I just said and understanding that the year-over-year -year chart here, excuse me, the YTD, the year-to-date chart tells a picture of a company that is bouncing along the bedrock, okay? And that is our friends with H-Y-L-N, okay? The stock, the stock itself. If you are going to become a highly on share owner, it is going to be incumbent upon you to exercise the number one ingredient that I feel is going to be necessary in seeing this opportunity through. And let me impart to you a page out of my playbook. This is why you guys tune in to me for my weekly commentary because I give you the in-depth insights from the back of my brain, the very depths of my application, the very <laughs> pedigree of my thought processes in this opportunity. Highly on might just very well be that name that I inevitably hold. Okay. Now, if that's my if that's my interpretation of how big this opportunity could be, when I look at people who suggest that they're just going to buy the stock at 10, I would retort and suggest that you are not an investor in this company. And it'll help you define whether or not you want to take this opportunity irrespective of where the stock price is, guys. I think you need to look at this and say, where is the stock going to be in five years from now? Where is the stock going to be 10 years from now? And dare I say, at the beginning of this slide, I earmarked what Hylion is forecasting to 2041 with regard to not only the domestic uh, interpretation of where we could be. But from a global perspective, looking to absolutely eliminate all sulfur applications from an international perspective in our shipping fleets, in our over-the-road transport, where we're going to be both from a global and domestic perspective here. And I want you really guys to understand that Hylion is much more than just a buy now and sell next week for a few dollars of profit. It is. And if you're looking at it any way other than the way I look at it and a few of the other large shareholders in this company look at it, and I'm quite certain the way the companies like GE, new investor in the company, and other large institutions who have taken a long-term perspective on this company, these shares are sticky. These shares are not going to be sold off in between, between uh, 10 and 15. I believe that there's going to be a lot of retail investors that parlay their shares uh, as it, they approach those because they're going to be circumnavigating a lot of gravestones that have been uh, created by this exacerbated sell-off in the stock. None of it's going to matter. If you're one of those people who are looking to sell the stock two years down the line only to watch the stock go up incrementally, over the next coming five to 10 years, are you really seeing the opportunity through as an investor? And I look at this uh, twofold. I look at this as me personally with my current position. The work is done. My current position in this company is started. That's it. The day-to-day -day price fluctuations in the company do not matter. 
It does not matter what people have to say with regard to what I do. It does not matter how bullish we are on the company now. What only matters is what is able to materialize over the coming years and and decades as we look at this opportunity going forward. This just speaks to another income opportunity with the Carno Generator, and I'm super excited to be investing in this new technology. For you guys that are uh, new to the terms of the deal here, the deal was valued at $37 million, a combination of, of, of cash and stock. Um, the phenomenal deal here, just the particulars of the facility uh, up in Cincinnati that I spoke about, um, the team. Uh, the intellectual property uh, that they come and as well as the 3D uh, printing capability. Um, what this all means as far as their ability to scale this to mass uh, is um, really yet to be determined and a story that I think that the Hylion team, uh, both the upper management and the executive board of directors, I'm sure had uh, collaborative efforts in giving the green light in uh, making this acquisition. Okay, For you guys that uh, understand how decisions are made, these decisions are made collectively and collaboratively as the upper management comes together. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a green or a red light. And um, they obviously were full force in the green light in making this acquisition go. And I'm super excited to um, to monitor this, uh, what Thomas Healy uh, deems to be kind of a transition period um, as they let the dust settle on this acquisition. And we look to integrate this uh, new, uh, what was a division of General Electric into Hylion, both from a team perspective uh, as well as an equipment um, collaboration. And that, that's going to be the key here is to actually see this Hypertruck uh, agnostic uh, prototype roll out. Uh, what, what an incredible opportunity. And I just want you guys to kind of sit back for a second and identify with where Hylion was seven years ago and where Hylion is now <laughs> making deals now with a $100 billion company like General Electric. Uh, what a what a transformative uh, uh, roadmap these guys have put themselves on, uh, and it's going to be exciting times going forward. So very cool stuff, guys, and uh, we'll probably uh, end up kicking you back here, and we'll kind of conclude this weekly video of Highlight. All right, guys, so we've come out of the investor presentation. What is it that we need to do going forward? I think exercising the... Um, probably application of deploying time into this opportunity is the most prudent. Uh, I think as we march toward this inevitable future, uh, I keep calling it inevitable. Will we have cash burn? Yes, we will. Will we have expansion of the team? Yes. Will we have color surrounding the uh, advancements of the Carnot technology? Yes. Will we have continued orders uh, against uh, the reservation order book uh, and uh, orders backed by deposits? Yes, we will. All of those are forthcoming. Uh, will we have winter validation? Yes. Will we have fleet trials? Yes. Will we have all of that forthcoming over the coming one to one year to about 15 months in my assessment? All of those items that I have just disclosed to you have not yet been uh, reached, but they are inevitable, my friends. And it's going to be the sheer deployment of time and patience on our end as ultra long shareholders in this company to realize and uh, really enjoy the appreciation of our um, long awaited uh, appreciation in the company and uh, pay off to patients that we've all deployed in this company. It's been a rough ride, but none of that matters. None of it matters in stock market investing. I find this of extreme interest to me. I have people all the time who hit me up and they're like, Ryan, I'm holding the company at 30 and now I'm down big time in the company. It doesn't matter. None of that matters in stock market investing. Did you make an ill-timed buy? Yes, yes, you did. That reality is uh, presented to you. So now you know. But as far as your attitude going forward, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is tomorrow. The only thing that matters is next week. The only thing that matters is six months from now. And the only thing that matters is inevitably where this company goes into the future with the pieces that they're putting into place now. It's that simple. 
And what I really wanted to express to investors in this particular video is to start to define the long-term vision of this company. Uh, the international perspective is going to roll sulfur off in 2050. Highly on projected uh, a different vision for an agnostic fuel future 20 years down the line. They have painted a picture of over the last 50 years, what has transpired in providing our grid power as we know it today. Where is that going to transition into the future is yet to be seen, but there are too many stars aligning with this company right now to ignore the fact that an alternative fuel future is here to stay, my friends. It is here to stay. It is not going away. Um, where there have been uh, starts and stops in the past with solar, I think those uh, were um, those were a sign of the times when those were rolled out. And I think now this movement has much more um, credibility. It has much more teeth. It has much more to back it in way of technology in that the scary question is, are fleets going to be able to realize this cleaner future and perhaps maybe even improve upon their efficiency to improve upon their ability to uh, provide uh, for greater payload capability and drive a better TCO into the future? Guys, the technology speaks to that now. And I think the opportunity speaks to that as well. So I think if you're looking to take a position in this company now, I think ultra patience is going to be the key in awarding time, ample time for this opportunity to come to fruition. Uh, put it in your portfolio and forget about it. It might be the very best pedigree to understanding the uh, long-term vision in this company. Because as this company starts to appreciate in value, um, my insistence upon identifying the very rock bottom pricing of this company will start to change. And I will start to transition my fluctuation in the stock market or the stock price of highly on holdings as we appreciate in value in a little bit different light in that we will have much more fundamentals to play into um, observing the technicals of the company and understanding where might be a better entry to add more shares, but those base shares doesn't get any better than $3.79 at this point, guys. There's no difference in the company between $4 now and $12 tomorrow. There's no difference to me at all. And I really wanted to capture what is going to be the ultra long value in this company and to double down on the idea of investors just saying, F it, I'm just going to hold my shares inevitably. Uh, inevitably, I will be provided the opportunity for my out. But when that is, could be decades down the line. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the totality of this video. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the highly on updates. Really want to invite you guys to share the message with those uh, investors out there that are somewhat opportunistic like mine that are interested in the space, uh, EV uh, and electrifying an agnostic fuel future uh, for ourselves. Share the message, bring them on to the community, guys. We are looking to embolden a community of retail investors where they have been left out uh, naked, shivering, and hungry, left to die in opportunities past. This opportunity, guys, we will not allow to pass. We will embrace this opportunity and dare to embrace this opportunity ultra long. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.